Hello and welcome again to Real to Real. Although pro-life marchers will not be peacefully gathering in Washington, D.C. this year to mark the 48th anniversary of Roe v. Wade, the controversial 1973 Supreme Court decision legalizing abortion in the United States, that doesn't mean their commitment has waned. Typically, thousands of pilgrims head down to Washington in January for the annual pro-life march, but this year, the march is virtual. Carolee McGrath spoke to some local parishioners who make this trip each year, learning why and how they're continuing a pro-life witness locally. Usually in January, Deacon Jose Correa of Our Lady of Guadalupe Parish in Holyoke is busy coordinating the annual trip to the March for Life in Washington, D.C. But this year, due to COVID-19 restrictions and concerns about security at the Capitol, the March for Life will be virtual. So Deacon Jose and his wife Miguelina of 38 years are pivoting, like everyone else, but remain committed to being a voice for the unborn. We've been going to the March for Life since 2003. It's been quite a few years since actually uh, my younger kids were very small. Typically, Our Lady of Guadalupe, which now shares worship space at St. Jerome Parish as part of the Catholic Collaborative of Holyoke, fills one to two buses for the annual pro-life pilgrimage, a strong showing for the Diocese of Springfield. Jose and Miguelina have three children who have attended the march with them. In the beginning, when we talk about it, my daughter was about 14, and she said, you know what, I think we need to start doing this. And she said, you guys have never gone. And I think she went to a retreat and she heard about it so much and it sank into her and she came back and that's how we started. So for 17 years, the family took the all night bus ride down to Washington DC and witnessed with fellow parishioners and prayed with thousands of strangers with the same mission of changing hearts and minds on abortion. The pro-life issue is personal to Miguelina, who had her third child, Javier, in her early 40s. I had a choice, according to these other people. No, I did not have a choice. I had a child, and that child needed to come to life, to this world. This child is 22 years old, and he is amazing. He's a wonderful kid. He's part of the youth group. He has a heart that we don't know where it come from, but yes, we do. It come from God. Maybelline and Tony Burgos are also members of Our Lady of Guadalupe and attend the March for Life with the Correas. Tony Burgos is the president of the Knights of Columbus Knights on Bikes for the Diocese of Springfield. Last fall, they held a pro-life bike witness in which he, Maybelline, and others prayed a decade of the rosary at five churches across the diocese. Their last stop was the Shrine of the Holy Innocents, located at the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy in Stockbridge. The shrine memorializes all children who have died, including those children lost to abortion. The shrine is special to Maybelline, who was open about her own abortion she had when she was 22, years before meeting Tony. I have a duty um, to let the world know um, it's not easy to share this, um, but I know God gave me the strength to do so. Maybelline says she's received healing after attending a Rachel's Vineyard retreat, a post-abortive ministry. Maybelline is hoping that by sharing her story, she'll offer encouragement to other women who have gone through the trauma of abortion. She is also hoping that her story will offer encouragement to those women who are facing a crisis pregnancy. They think it's our own body, um, it's our own DNA, and the truth is that it's not. It's not our body, it's not our DNA. So to me, it's important to bring that knowledge to people for everything that I went through when I did it, um, the process, um, from the beginning to the end was horrible. Um, I wish I knew better. And so I am trying to prevent other youth and other women like me to go through that experience, through loss, through suicidal thoughts, through different sexual relations. Um, this all comes through abortion. Tony, an Army veteran, says Maybelline's witness is heroic, and he says she sets the example for him and all men to step up. I have to be, just like St. Joseph, be there for him. Uh, Jesus wasn't his child, but he protected him all along. 
Tony says he's proud to be part of the Knights of Columbus, which has an ultrasound initiative. The Knights raise money to buy ultrasound machines for local crisis pregnancy centers like this one, New Direction, in North Adams. Maybelline says she wishes she had the opportunity to see the ultrasound before her abortion. Now that we have been sharing this with Knights of Columbus, with our parishes, with uh, Rachel's Vineyard, uh, the healing, it comes from God. So it's, it's something that you have to share the pain to be healed. Just after Christmas, Massachusetts lawmakers passed abortion expansion legislation, which lowers the age of consent from 18 to 16 and allows abortion past 24 weeks in certain circumstances to include a lethal fetal anomaly and to preserve a woman's physical or mental health. While Maybelline says abortion creates heartache for women, she, along with Tony and the Correa, say they will continue to pray for hearts to be changed and for eyes to be opened and for everyone to see the abortion issue not as a political one, but as one of human rights. The sanctity of life is so important that as Christians, we have to defend it. And we have to defend it because life is from conception all the way up into the end, until we die. And who better than protect the unborn than us Christians, because we have to stand for what's right. If we don't defend the unborn, who's going to do this? Mm. Reporting for Real to Real, I'm Carolee McGrath.